when we got there, you know, it was it was strange because we were we were basically going into, I'd say, smoke and gunfire. But there was a lot of things happening that you could see that were, that were happening there, and it was a. There was an interesting time. Our, our first night, we got into Nadi Ali and we went to stay at the police compound in the the district um, centre, and we got you know we got smashed on that roof, um, and it was crazy. You know, we were just RPGs firing into walls and. I'd, you know, by some miracle, I don't even know how, we, personally, we didn't take any casualties, but another another section of, in Nadi Ali had taken casualties, so I had two medics with that section, in fact, sorry, um, one medic, Abby, and I had my other medics with me in the, the main, um, the main group, so we ended up having to leave the safety of, well, I say safety, the when the ambush had finished, we had to leave there to go collect casualties from that other location to then go to outside of the AO um, for a, a bird to come in and take the three casualties out. And even that was a weird, the weirdest thing because we'd just been you know, really badly ambushed um, or heavily ambushed. We're then going into this unknown area, area of operations at night uh, you know, to drop off casualties. And I was just thinking, this is nuts. And... That sort of again set the mood for the the following seven weeks because then we ended we ended up um, basing ourselves in patrol base Argyle and um, over the period and I, it's funny I've got the, the the sheets the A4 bits of paper with the casualties and numbers on just quite nonchalantly written you know about their their injuries and we ended up taking inclusive of because we were then with the Afghan army so we were just kind of attached and. 66 casualties in seven weeks from one sort of area, area was um, quite significant. And it, what I'd previously spoke about, about wanting to really test myself and to want to offer, you know, we had a really, a really successful med team there. We had no doctor. And I was lucky enough to have some really good junior medics with me. You know, they were um, really, they grew up pretty quick, you know, in, the, in that, that time, as soldiers and medics. And... We got to a point in that patrol base where it was that bad, you know, I had to help man the company mortar line. So I was um, myself and the company sergeant major. And I remember just thinking, you know, I w it was brilliant, but it was almost like, right, I'm, I've, had, I've had enough now. And I don't, I don't mean that in a bad way, but it never, that sort of combat where, where it was just every day, you know, people were skirmishing around and, and we did become quite a tight knit group in that patrol base um kind of the best and worst times of my life but in in a really good way you know because I learned I learned an awful lot about myself and I learned an awful lot about how to if you like establish myself in that group like I I, I remember um you know always thinking medics were kind of well it's just you're just the medic but you need to really sort of stand up and be counted and, and, and to be listened to because the decisions that you make are so important. But because I would I was so grateful for all the tactical um, courses that I'd done because the, de the decisions that I then made were always a reflection of that. So when I'd go to, the, to my company commander with a, an issue or a problem or, or just um, an advisor, because that's what I essentially was for him, um, he always listened. You know, it was always a case of just wanting to know what you had to say. And it, it was brilliant. And, it, you know, it was a real, I felt like I'd really a, a, accomplished something. You know, it was really good. And and then my medics as well. So, yeah, it was a great, um, a great experience.